Hello and welcome to Colgart's Miniatures. Today I'm going to show you how I made this piece of terrain for Star Wars Legion. I think this was just a Hasbro toy, which my friend sold me for quite cheap. Um, but then again, I'm quite unsure what the actual make of the model is. I've got some foam core and some MDF board, which I'm going to stick together and form a nice base for the toy to sit on. Here I placed the toy down at an angle just to get a rough idea what the layout might be. And I've taken out the screws and any electronical bits which might be inside that will get in the way of cutting it later. These are some pieces that snapped off. I'll use them for something else. Here I line up the foam core to roughly see where I want the ship to land. And I mark a line where I'm going to cut. I used a normal hacksaw to cut through the plastic. Although I recommend something electronic if you can afford it, as getting through those thicker pieces took a little bit more effort. I placed a couple figures next to the spaceship, Cad Bane and Sabine Wren. The cockpit is rather large for the 148 28mm scale, but we'll hide that with modelling clay and sand and other bits of rubble. And here's the aftermath. Some bits snapped off as I was sawing through, including the back piece which I'll just glue on later. But we can use all these other bits of plastic for rubble, broken spaceship parts and other bits of debris. Um, just add more detail to the ceiling piece. And here we have all the broken parts. We've got a piece of landing gear which I'll stick in the middle. That'll be, again, sticking up. I think it'll look quite cool and quite effective. Just playing around with bits of debris, making sure those back pieces fit nicely. There's also another broken part of the wing which I'll use as a standalone piece. And here's another wing piece which I'll use for another piece of terrain. I used a mini rotary tool to make marks on the wings and all the other parts of the ship. Highly recommend getting one. Um, I'm not sure if you get the same effect with a sort of Stanley knife or a sharp knife or whatever you want to use. Um, but yeah, here's the, like little pieces which I've made little battle marks into. So I think it worked out quite well. Um, I think I do a little bit more next time, especially on the underneath because that's the side which is a bit more viewable. Also using the rotary tool, I've got a sanding attachment which I'll get rid of those manufacturer marks. Again showing the modeling clay and polyfiller I'll be using. Plug up all those little holes. Quite roughly smudging in some modeling clay. With the modeling clay I just bunch it up, smudge it in and it creates quite a nice texture to the ship as well. Maybe something to experiment with. The bit in that back landing pad, uh, landing leg, it didn't, didn't really work as well as I'd hoped. Here I've got some paper clips to act as exposed wires in the ship. I'd recommend using like chicken wire, fencing wire, something a little bit more uh, easier to bend as the paper clips are quite tough. Again, from my little bits box, then a little iPhone charger cable. I'm not too sure where that little plastic bit came from, but. Here I roughly mark out where the ship's going to be. I bought a precision craft knife set from Amazon. Very, very handy. It comes with all these blades. I'm not sure which each blade is specifically used for. Chuck a comment down below and let me know which one's which. Cutting through the foam core is quite easy. It takes a couple cuts to actually break it off. Yeah, it pops up quite easily. 
we use that for another piece of terrain. Again, sort of seeing if the ship fits in nicely, which it does. And go on to this other side piece. There's a little cameo from Dracula. But uh, yep, dry fit in the spaceship and the landing leg, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, it sits well. So I've got a little wobbly bit here, which I'll just super glue on later. Um, I had a little trouble with my cheap super glue, so I had to go back to my more expensive one. Uh, don't buy cheap products. So only if you're gonna mix it around, but I don't know. So yeah, doing a little dry fit to make sure they all fit nicely. Get that super glue. Definitely would get um, smaller bits of wire and thicker bits of wire just to have a bit more variation you can add more detail into. Again, chicken wire is a bit more moldable, you can move it and create a bit more shapes. The paper clips are very tough, very stiff. I had a bit of trouble with this this piece here, but nothing a bit of super glue can't fix. But yeah, give it a good squeeze. Make sure there's enough super glue in the actual parts which are touching, because um, most of the time I super glue something and it's not touching anything. So. So yeah, adding lots of different wires and also little bits and bobs really adds to the detail and aesthetic to the ship. Here I'm messing around with a different panel. I, I never ended up using that on the ship. Um, just another bit of debris on the floor. Again, these side bits, there's some gaps in there, but it didn't really bother me too much because it is a destroyed ship after all. Here yeah, I'm twisting the tape clips together to make a bit more interesting cables maybe sticking out the side panels and other gaps in the ship I was really unsure where I actually wanted this piece um, but I found a nice spot for it in the end That's the finished base, put that to one side, and I proceeded to stick on the back pieces. A little bit of super glue, try super quick. Get a little bit of modelling clay in those holes. Probably don't need to actually add super glue. Um, didn't really make a difference if I added it or not. Then I finally found out where I wanted to put some wires again. Again, seeing where, where they might fit. I was thinking, looking out the back of the engine, out the cockpit, have them hanging over the side of the ship, make it look quite nice aesthetically. Now it's time to hot glue the spaceship to the base. Again, hot glue dries very quickly. 
quite surprisingly, the hot glue dried very quickly. Um, yeah. Yeah, quite happy with it so far. I'm going to stick down the landing gear with hot glue, but that didn't work. So I used super glue instead. Not too sure why it didn't work. Maybe there was not enough. Not too sure why it didn't glue at the same time as the spaceship. Um, but I'm just impatient, so I use super glue instead. Yeah, there's little bits of hot glue which are dripping down, but that got filled by either polyfiller or modeling clay. Nice little dry fit and stick down some bits of debris. See what goes well, see what I like. Hot gluing down that second piece there. Acts as a nice piece of cover for any models in the piece of terrain. And again, just creates another bit of dynamic to the, to the area. Just gluing down on the bits of debris and pieces just to make it a bit more detailed. You're just applying bits to the back of the engine there, adding bits of texture in between the MDF and the foam core. And I tried to use polyfiller to build up quite empty spaces, but I ended up using modeling clay instead, just because it dried quicker and it was a little bit more, it was a little bit easier to work with, probably just because it's modeling clay and actually designed for that kind of thing. Again, I use the parts of the knife to make scorch marks in the ground. Yeah, getting lots of different textures on the floor with the uh, polyfiller there. Using different parts of the knife to make those scorch marks. Again, the, the modeling clay I think works a lot better for building up bits of earth towards the bits of debris there. Using a bit of PVM water, use it to spread around the base. Um, Try not to get it on the many parts of the ship, some of the polyfiller and modeling clay, because that already had its own texture. Here I put a bit of glue on the ship just to have some sand lay on top to make it look like it's been there for quite a while. This is just sand from Warworld Gaming. A very good product, very cheap. I'm not sure if it's just actual sand or special sand or fake sand. Either way, very, very cheap, very effective. Quite good to have a carry bag underneath so you collect any excess sand, which I'll be tapping off in a bit, and then just put that back in the box to use for later. There's a lot of excess sand. Or feel free to use it in case Darth Vader attacks, you know. But anyway, what happened was on the base, some parts didn't get covered. Um, I thought it would look quite cool when, when I paint it up and everything, um, but it had a little bit of a shine after I did the base coat. It looked okay in the end, but next time I'll make sure it's all covered in sand. Chaos Black for an undercoat, and then I use different brands of paint and washes for the different layers. 
Vallejo products, some Citadel products, also some Army Painter products. I couldn't quite remember the exact paint scheme, but I pulled up a couple images and just cracked on with some corn red. So the camera makes the red look brighter than it actually is. The base coat, it being black, darkens the colour when it dries. If you want it brighter, use white or grey. And if you wanted to do some kind of chipping effect using hairspray, use a bronze or brown colour if you're going for like a dusty planet. I started off using white. Um, I actually didn't like it, so I painted it over in grey. Probably shouldn't have painted it all, but we all make mistakes. A little rough around the edges, a few mistakes here and there, but you just cover that up later with darker paint or a wash or anything. I started using a silver dry brush for the metal bits in the engines. Didn't really like it, so I used a darker metallic grey, which it looked a lot better. Also going around the edges, with the silver just to make it a little bit more weathered. I use different shades of yellow to create all the sand. You could use darker tones, maybe like an orange or a red to depict Geonosis. Uh, I'm going for a lighter tone just so we could do some more Tatooine or Jakku planet surfaces etc. Big shout out to MS Paints. I watched quite a few of his videos on how to make junkyard scenery and he used this Vallejo streaking effect paint which creates a very nice greasy, grime, rustic look which I use pretty much across the whole ship. But not doing too much because less is more. Smudging bits with my finger, getting it all on the bits of guns, and the metallic areas as well. It really does pop on the silver and brighter areas. Then I go over to the wing. Not sure if I got the angle quite right on this piece, but all in all, it looked really nice, really cool, very dusty and grimy. I'm using a little bit of black to make sort of scorch marks into where I've cut it with that little rotary tool um, as well on just parts of the ship. So you get that real sort of damaged laser burn feel. I didn't really notice this much when I was filming, but the mount for my camera is linked to the table and it wobbled. It wobbled every time I painted. Um, so next time on my next video, I'll attach it to something else. Maybe my windowsill or something else, you know. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Just these final little touches. And there we go. Here's the final piece. I really like that blue little symbol on there. Definitely going to add that into more bits of scenery, maybe some kind of graffiti. Try and learn the language a little bit, do some symbols and everything. But yeah, very happy with how this turned out. See all those grease marks, the sand and the blackened dirt, which has been scorched from burning engines and bits of metal. Yeah, love it. Yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know if you've got any tips yourself or any links to any videos that you've done which I could sort of learn from and 
implicating my own videos and other bits of scenery. Huge shout out to Crafty Terrain, Crabbock, MS Paints, Dark Matter Workshop and Eric's Hobby Workshop. All of those guys, they've been making fantastic videos on how to make terrain and scenery, from which I've taken little bits from each one of those videos and try to implement it into this piece here. Thank you very much for watching this video today. I hope you've enjoyed it and taken something from it. And uh, yeah, see you next time.